Hi, I'm Lucas Mack, and I'm on a mission to see the hurting get healed and the healed go out and heal others in order for all of us to experience the true love and light we desire. This podcast is me sharing my journey with you so you don't feel alone in your journey. Welcome to the Golden Rule Revolution. Hello, my brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another episode of the Golden Rule Revolution. I am Lucas Mack. Thank you for joining. It's been about a month since I brought to you my last episode. I got <laughs> got sick, had the flu, um, and it's just been a busy uh, summer. So it was nice to take a few weeks off of recording podcasts, um, and I do have some really good ones coming up. So stay tuned for those. But today, what I wanted to talk about is where we are in the state of the world and this concept of that all things work out. Um, There's a verse in the Bible, Romans 8, 28, in the King James Version, it says, and we know all things work together for good to them who are the love, to them who are um, the called, to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So it says, and we know all things work together for them who um, are the called who love God um, according to his purpose. Anyway, all things work out. My daughter and I were talking this morning that uh, some, do things always work out? And I said, one of my favorite sayings is it always works out in the end. If it has yet to work out, it's not the end. It's not the end. And as we're going through this time right now, I've talked to so many of my friends, um, clients, different different conversations I'm having And it seems like there is a separation between the world that was and the world that is coming. And for many, I don't know about you, but for me, I just find the world that was so boring, so uninteresting, so not vivid and life-bearing. It is dull. It is filled with fake food, fake music, fake culture, fake religion, fake everything. It just seemed like everything was a construct of this matrix system that we as a collective have built buying into a false narrative that we needed the systems to live and thrive when in actuality, we've always been able to live and thrive without those systems. And so we're in the crossroads right now between leaving the world that was and entering the world that will be part of that is people are, I really don't think people are prepared for the systems crumbling and they are going to crash crumble. Um, Mark my words, listen to what I'm saying. They will crash. What um, I had a interview, I had a podcast recently with Ali Sedatantan and I told him that, and whether you like Donald Trump or not, you cannot ignore the fact that he is a key component in this entire storyline of where we find ourselves right now. My liberal friends don't want to acknowledge that and they hate him and have disdain for for so many people. The conservative people are thinking that he is the Messiah, that he's been deemed the Messiah of America. Regardless of your view of whether he's good or bad, there is no denying the fact that he is a key component in the global narrative, in the global structure of where we are today. One of the things that I find interesting is in his penthouse in Trump Tower in New York, he has a um, painting. Um, what's it called? You know, like a fresca painting, like a Michelangelo painting in the ceiling of the god Apollo. And Apollo is the destroyer. It is Shiva. And one thing that I think people are not prepared for is Donald Trump, whether he gets indicted, whether he gets arrested, whether whatever is going to happen here coming up, it is going to bring the entire system down. What people don't understand is the pendulum swings one way, you push it out, you don't like this other group, you don't like, uh, you know, liberals can't stand conservatives, conservatives can't stand liberals, whatever divide uh, there is, Catholic, Protestant, left, right, all these different narratives. But you push that pendulum out and it comes back with the same force that you pushed with. And 
we are about to enter the the swing back and it is going to level everything. There's videos that I've been seeing on social media about pastors berating their congregation um, in Christian churches for not giving the, the him enough money to buy the watches that he wants. Or there is a pastor in some church, I think in New York, that got robbed at gunpoint. And then the the story leaked that he might have been part of the heist that he could reclaim um, the insurance money. There's just a whole bunch of shady dealings and churches and Christianity as we've known it is going to crumble politics and governments as we have, as we have known them are going to crumble social structures as we, as we have known them are going to crumble. Now I share all this, not with any anxiety, in fact, not necessarily joy, but I feel complete peace about it. And I want you to as well, because God, who is love, and this entire fabric of our existence, our fiber, our being, our breath is based in love, is going to work all things out. Remember, all things work out in the end. If it has yet to work out, it's not the end. And we are not at the end yet, but the end is coming. I heard someone say the other day, we have entered the beginning of the end. And it certainly feels that way. As we move into this new season, whatever has been left unhealed inside you, face it, do the work, heal it. Whatever in you is relying on the system to continue bringing you food, water, supplies, necessities without talking to your neighbors and building your own local community. It's time to go talk to your neighbors and it's time to build local community. It's time to become human again. And that's what we are stepping into. We are leaving. We have been part of the matrix system so much so that the work that we do propels it. The words that we say propel it. The, the, the Our whole existence fed this matrix system and the matrix system is crumbling. Christianity, the eschatology of Christianity is that um, the Antichrist is about to enter the scene. However, I believe the Antichrist has already been on the scene and we are at the end of that. But I've also looked at timelines where the book of Revelation says at the end of a thousand year reign that Satan was loose for a time and season. And we can be in this season right now. We don't actually know what day or time it is, which is why the deep state reptilian evil people that have been running the matrix system and siphoning all our energy changed the calendars because Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. Not that he doesn't want us to know the day nor the hour, but that no man will know it because they've changed the calendar system so much. The lunar calendar, the solar calendar, the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar, the Chinese calendar, the Hebrew calendar, the dates, we don't know what day it actually is right now. That said, there is a time coming where all this craziness and foolishness and, and pain and destruction is going away. And every lie will be revealed. Every truth will make us free. And love will be the currency, the culture, the fabric by which we engage with one another. It will be. And the, the digital matrix is dwindling down the impact of the truth tellers. And I don't mean the truthers that are pro one side or the other. I mean, there is soul truth here on this planet that doesn't get people to follow, that doesn't act like guru. It just simply holds space for every person to find their own truth that God had has given ordained and blessed from the very beginning of that soul's existence to live out here on earth, to be the fullness of who you are intended to be. And who you are intended to be is the essence, expression, and fullness of the love of God. I was talking and teaching this the other night uh, in the Dawn of Masculinity course. 
it is impossible, truly, if to be honest, and I can hear so many Christians coming by, <laughs> saying things to me, but it is truly impossible to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't have the concept and understanding that God who is love under the law of free will allowed our soul to see everything that we would endure on this planet. And it is us, the courageous ones, all of us, every soul has chosen into this. And we have forgotten that nothing has happened to us. Everything has happened for us, for us to remember, reawaken and reclaim our story that we are the heroes of our existence. And that when we understand that our inner child was wounded and was looking for the love that can only be found from the source of all love and not another human being. And then when we encounter other people, we can hold space for them to be like, oh, they're just on their journey. They've yet to remember to reawaken. And that is loving your neighbor as yourself. That is truly being able to hold space for every single person you encounter Male, female, young, old, it doesn't matter. It matters not. When you can understand that God and our soul were in contract, were in unison in this birthing experience here in this physical realm, then you can understand that all the things that you have chosen and gone through, everything, and I'm talking about the most traumatic acts that you have gone through, you chose them to come to this moment to say, I broke it all. And I truly believe that our ancestors and all our generational lines are right behind us, cheering us on, saying, do it, set us free, set us free, break the chains. This is what we are entering. We are entering where the souls are going to come back. We're going to see the people, our loved ones are going to come back. We're going to see it all. It's going to be incredible. In fact, Jesus says that in heaven, the streets are paved with gold. The Bible says that in heaven, the streets are paved with gold. So gold no longer becomes the precious commodity. It becomes the, um, it becomes the, uh, what am I saying? The element by which we walk on and transfer our energy. It's a conduit. That's what I'm trying to say. Gold becomes a conduit of our energy. It used to be salt and then it's gold. And we are entering a new golden age, The whether you call it the age of Aquarius, whether you call it the, the age of the Mashiach, which are, whether you call it the millennial reign of Christ. What the golden age is, is the element of gold and us being in unison of conduit of our energy. And when we do this, when we live in the purified essence of who we are intended to be, the world changes instantly, vastly. There is no container at which you and I cannot do the miracles that we've always wondered, can we do? When we were kids, we wondered if we could fly. Jesus said, greater things than I have done, you will do. You can tell this mountain to move here. We will become creators of this reality as opposed to slaves of the reality that was. See, the people that run the matrix, they understand the power that we all are missing out on. They are the creators of this. They are moving mountains. They're changing the times and seasons. They're actually changing the sky, changing the weather, changing the food, changing everything. And we have lived as byproduct response uh, units to this system. And when we remember and reawaken, we come back to this place where the only thing that matters is our freedom, our healing, our bathing in the love, infinite and unconditional of God, of us holding space for every other person we encounter, understanding that they're on their journey and they need someone not to tell them, preach at them, convince them, coerce them, but what they need is someone just to hold space in unconditional love and say, I understand. I understand where you are and it's okay. You don't have to continue down this painful path. You can stop at any moment, face the pain. I'll stand with you. Let's do it together. But you have to express out of your mouth all the guttural pain you have carried your entire existence. And for when you do, when you get honest with yourself, when you cry out, this is where the blessings start. This is where the blessings begin. 
There is not some talisman. You don't do the rosary and do all these things. Nothing changes. We've been doing the same bullshit prayer and confession and all this stuff for 2000 years. What has it gotten us? It's gotten us more pain, more subversion, more compliance, more cogs in the wheel. And I am here to tell you, come out of the system. God never intended you to be a slave to the matrix system. God intended you to go into the matrix system, to wake up from it, reclaim your sovereignty and bring other people out of it as well. When we all stand in our own power, remember who we are, know that we are made in the divine image of the most high God. This reality becomes fun and all things work out. All things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Whose purpose? God's purpose. What is God? God is love. What is love? Love is giving the highest good to everyone at all times, everywhere, which is why when we're in victim mode, when we're in pain and trauma, and when we are in slavery to the matrix system, we cannot see the highest perspective. We cannot see the highest good. So it seems like everything happens to us and life is hard and everything's a grind and everything just has to be what it is. And I don't like this political person or this person makes me feel uncomfortable. They're taking away my rights or it just becomes this really small game when you come back to yourself and like, you can choose whether you want to play that game or not. And if you don't want to play that game, you don't have to. That's what sovereignty is all about. How I define sovereignty said it many times on this podcast. When I say yes, it is yes. And when I say no, it is no. That's it. Yes or no. Which is why Jesus said, let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. Because what you say and what you do must be in alignment. Jesus said, in that day thou shalt give an account of every idle word thou hast spoken, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And let me tell you something. Whether you have grown up not liking religion or if you've grown up in the Christian path or whatever path you have come from and you are on currently, crack open Jesus's words and understand the teachings, whether it was literally him, whether he really existed, whether there's all sorts of different narratives. But the one thing that is clear is we have these words written on behalf of this man's voice. And it is incredibly powerful. You don't have to agree, but I do encourage you to read it. In that day, thou shalt give an account of every idle word thou hast spoken. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That means that God does not condemn us. That means that we actually condemn ourselves when our actions don't align with our words. Which is why politics is such a, a lie, and religion is such a lie, but I want to stick with politics. It says that you've heard the term, the bleeding heart liberal, they care for all these causes, but then they use government to solve it, which strips away the authority and power and takes from the, the individual and it never solves it because it can't be fed if it solves it. So liberalism is a lie in, in the modern term, not mo classical liberalism of freedom. Conservatism is that it's just, uh, self-reliance and F the world and it's just us and we're going to grind it out. Well, you have to have community and you have to have a community based in love. So both of these systems are broken when it pits each other against each other. Religion, Christianity, which I know so well, believes every Christian, if they're honest, believes that they are enlightened, that they are the only ones that have found the truth and that every other person on this planet are going to hell. If they don't say this prayer, God, I confess my sins before you. I say, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I, I you know, claim you as Lord of my life. Please come into my heart and live with me. Something like that. Just that simple prayer. However, <laughs> I don't even know how many different languages there are on this planet. And there are people right now who love God, who have never even heard the name Jesus, who've never even 
heard, read the Bible, cracked open the Bible or the Quran or any other religious text, but they are present on this earth, feeling the earth, looking at a tree, looking at the sky, no light pollution, seeing the stars, and they are yearning to be with their creator. And the creator who sees all, knows all, loves all, sees them and reveals himself to them. That's why it's a universal truth. Seek and ye shall find. There are people seeking all over the world. The matrix tries to distract us and cloud our minds and, and confuse us from seeking, but we are seeking and the seekers are finding. And the seekers are not finding truth within systems. All the systems are going to go away. The seekers are finding truth with the most high God in alignment with what resonates within their soul. Can they breathe more deeply? <sighs> are they at more peace? Can they sleep well at night? Forget any other person on this planet. If they don't align to your truth and your freedom, what you know the creator has ordained for you, then it doesn't matter what they have to say. You can, and I've said this and I think about this quite often, if I, if it was possible to map out to the very finite, infinite degree of what we believe, thoughts, belief structures, ideas, daydreams, memories, all the things that we hold a construct in our, our brain, if we're able to map it out, like a fingerprint is unique to the individual, if we were able to map out belief systems and we were able to put it up on a giant screen so the whole world could see it doesn't matter if you go to a fundamentalist evangelical church and people have gone there for 30 years, the same people, not one person will have the exact same belief structure in there. They'll have similar beliefs, mostly overlapping beliefs, but not identical beliefs. So believing the exact same thing is not necessary when we're honest with each other for community, for, for uh, community and unity, quite frankly. But what it does take is humility for the sovereign soul to be in their own truth and to ask others what their truth is. And like, oh, tell me more. How'd you learn that? It's incredible. Keep going. This is what we're waking up to. This is the beauty of this time, whether it's the great awakening, whether it's the last time uh, where Satan's lose for a time season, whether we're going into the millennial reign of Christ, wherever we are, whatever this is. Really, I'm so tired of even I'm tired of it all. But whatever it is, the manipulators, the controllers, the coerc the coercers of sovereignty are being revealed and removed, and the sovereign souls are standing in alignment. And what I'm encouraging is that the standing in alignment is not to the system, but it is to the most high. And it is to yourself, true to yourself. Be true to yourself. When you don't heal your trauma, you're not being true to yourself. When you don't face your pain, you're not being true to yourself. When you aren't able to hold space for every single person on this planet, you're not being true to yourself. You're being true to a other narrative given to you saying this is the truth and we gobble it down and it sits in us and it vibrates in a weird frequency and we get angry and upset and saying, get rid of all that, release it all. Whether you need to Think of your most painful memories, put a pillow on your face and just, just scream it out. Get it, get all that energy out of you, all the trauma and, and express your anger, express your sadness, express your feelings. Know the limitations of your body, of your self. So that truly at the end of the day, you and I, we can all come to this place and say, I've tried it all. I've done it all. I've said it all. I've seen it all. I've experienced it all. And the only thing that matters is to love God and to love one another and to hold space for one another and watch love do its divine work inside one another and ignite and heal and free every soul it comes in contact with. That is the beautiful power that we have access to right now. And dear brother and sister, my prayer for you. My, what word, what word is it? My desire for you is that you find that love and you find your truth and free yourself from the systems that are about to go away. 
Because if you're hooked to them, there will be fear inside you. If you're hooked to them, there will be anxiety. But when you're free from them, you can just watch as they go and that we can build the new. A world, an economy, a society, a culture based in the very essence of love, freedom, truth, beauty, and goodness where abuse will not be present because everyone will be healed, where confusion will not be present because truth will be revealed and permeate every mind, body, heart, and soul. I want to end with this. When I was talking to my daughter yesterday, saying that it always works out in the end. If it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. And my other daughter was saying, well, what if, what if you die before it works out? And what I'm struck by is my children's grasping of, is the world good? Is there a goodness to this world? Or is it just that disappointment and pain and um, unfulfilled dreams? Is that is that the truth of this reality? And as I was thinking about that, and I'm still <laughs> blown away because it's, it's so, in a way I can remember asking the same thing as a child or thinking about the same thing. Like, what if things don't work out, dad? Do they work out? What if they don't work out? This life, this is the truth that I'm about to hit you with. Death is not real. The soul can leave this body, but the soul cannot be destroyed. You are a living, eternal being. Your soul is of the breath of God, your neshama. For God breathed into man and man became a living soul. It is God's breath. And God's breath breathes in and out, breathes in and out. You have nothing to fear. Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, FDR said, you have nothing to fear but fear itself, which is true. And I've heard so many people say fear is false evidence appearing real. But fear is the absence of love. When you feel fear, it's because you have yet to experience love in that moment. And for my children, trying to express or reach out and touch their furthest extent of what they can comprehend what I shared with them is it always works out in this life or the life to come, but it always works out because all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So dear brother and sister, I hope this message blesses you, encourages you, maybe challenges you, but strengthens you in your resolve to reclaim your sovereignty to heal your wounds and trauma. Hold no more secrets. If, you, if you're if you holding a secret that you, with your spouse, if you're holding a secret with someone in humility, go before them and share. Free yourself. No more secrets. No more lies. No more shame. No more guilt. This is the time to be free. This is the time to have the courage to unbear your soul and bear the burden for it is not yours to carry. I love you all. I cannot wait to bring more episodes coming up. I got a really beautiful sister I'm recording with um, next week. Um, just a lot of beautiful content coming. And I'm in the process of figuring out, all right, what's my message in all this? What am I here to say? I don't want to sound like everything else. I'm bored with all the other stuff, with success and this, it's just all boring to me, all of it. I want visceral love and visceral freedom and visceral sovereignty. And I'm here to help every person reclaim that which is truly theirs from the very beginning. And then that is a free and liberated soul, a heart full of love and a mind so clear that it can see everything before it and discern good from evil, right from wrong, 
ultimately to know that in the discernment is the goodness of God. I am Lucas Mack. This podcast is called The Golden Rule Revolution, and I am on a mission to see the hurting get healed, the healed go out and heal others, that we may all be free. You're not alone, dear brother and sister. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for listening. If you're new to my podcast, please subscribe, like, share this content. This is a different message, but it's so needed. So if you have if you feel inclined to share, please share. I love you all. I bless you all. I am Lucas Mack, and I'll talk to you on the next episode. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. For support in your journey, go to my website, lucasmack.com. <music>